what would be the reasons of why coming to a seminar like this? Is it that you may have some type of chronic health condition? Could it be that you have some type of arthritic joint problem? Maybe you've got a bad knee. Maybe you've got a bad hip. Maybe you've got a bad back. Maybe you've got a bad neck. Maybe you've got some uh, feet issues. Maybe you've got an elbow problem. You know, there's lots of different things that would be going on with that. Maybe you're trying to avoid surgery. Maybe you've already had surgery and you're like, eh, I don't really want to do that again. Uh, what are the other options? Maybe you're just here to help a loved one. Maybe just to help, here, uh, help a loved one or a friend or a neighbor, somebody like that. Maybe you're just here for learning about other options outside of doing surgery or some type of medication. Or improve the quality of your life without drugs and surgery. Maybe that's why you're here. Well, knowledge is key to success when we talk about stem cells because stem cells is just a broad term, okay? Because when, if you don't know anything about stem cells, you, a lot of people still think that it's coming from a, a, a fetus, a, a dead fetus or an embryo, right? That's not what's happening. Well, it's illegal in the United States for that to happen. You have to be able to understand what we're actually off offering uh, to help patients. So that is very, very key. So also would highly recommend uh, in that, that 24 minute video that uh, I'm gonna recommend for you guys to see, there's also an interview with Dr. Neil Reardon. That's his clinic in, in Panama. Dr. Neil Reardon, anybody heard of his name? Yep, have one person over here, Dr. Neil Reardon. So if you see that right here, write his name down and, and go to YouTube and, and put his name and there's a ton of research. He's one of the top researchers worldwide not just in the United States, worldwide. Um, so we have to understand, well, what is regenerative medicine? It is a non-drug, non-surgical approach to helping four major things, and that's to reduce inflammation, repair and regenerate damaged tissue, and it modulates the immune system. Okay, so those are what these cells actually do, right? So when we talk about decreasing inflammation, it's not just talking about if you've got a bad knee and you see that it swells. Yeah, that's inflammation. Okay, that's your body's natural ability to try to heal itself, right? But we're talking about not only that, we're talking about systemic cellular inflammation. What that means is there's a lot of people in this room right now that are dealing with systemic cellular inflammation. You, it means you have inflammation in all your cells. And uh, we're going to go over a couple of things in a, in, uh, in a few minutes to see if anybody's got any of that going on in their body, right? So I know you're probably thinking, well, okay, Decreasing inflammation, but repair and regenerate. You can, you can actually do that. Repair and regenerate damaged tissue, yes. So if you've got loss of cartilage in your knee, or if you've got a torn labrum in your shoulder, if you've got a rotator cuff tear, if you've got a torn meniscus, if you've got disc problems in, in, your, in your spine, if you've got bursitis, capsulitis, if you've got any of this inflammation, uh, all these different chronic inflammatory issues, this is what these cells can actually do without drugs and surgery, right? And it modulates the immune system. Modulate the immune system means it helps ramp up or ramp down your immune system. So if you do have an autoimmune disease, it can potentially help improve by helping the, the balance of the cytokines and the, and the immune system. So pretty neat to see. FDA regulations, we were able to be able to do this. With the type of cells that we're talking about, we were able to do this in about, uh, for about five years in the United States. So you don't have to go to Panama, or you don't have to go to uh, Mexico, you don't have to go to Costa Rica or Europe to be able to do this now. And it's at a reasonable cost. So you're gonna learn that as we go through this process. This is the future of medicine. So you're gonna see this more and more and more and more about stem cells and how, uh, how amazing things can, can happen and you're gonna see more and more about, about stem cells and the different categories of stem cells as we go along. So I wanna explain how regenerative medicine works, the various forms of regenerative medicine, including stem cells, um, how and why we offer it at our clinic, and you're gonna see success stories. So you're gonna see people that came in for specific conditions, did injections for stem cells, and then you're gonna see follow-ups. So you'll see uh, video testimonies of patients as we go through. So the reason why we don't call it stem cell therapy is because it's not just stem cells. That's only a piece of the puzzle. If you look here, there's a lot going on. So what we actually call it is human cell and tissue transplant, okay? So right here, this is where you have the, the stem cells. So this is called mesenchymal stem cells. That's where these cells help repair and regenerate tissue. But it's not just that. 
Also in the product, there are general cytokines that has proteins that helps the immune system, homostatic cytokines, which helps balance things out from a physiological standpoint in the body, growth uh, factors, uh, plat uh, platelet-derived <coughs> fibroblasts. And this is really cool if you do have bone on bone, because I know there's people in this room right now that their doctor has told them that they have bone on bone, right? Show of hands. Yeah, it's happening, right? So this right here is scaffolding cytokines. It has collagen and hyaluronic acid and anti-inflammatory factors. Those help re begin to rebuild the structure and help rebuild the, uh, the damage. So, so what we have to get, we have to get a little bit more scientific and understanding what these cells, you know, most, most people don't know this, but everybody in this room has these type of cells. They're called MSCs. Mesenchymal stem cells, this right here, mesenchymal stem cell, also known as medicinal signaling cell. This is what it looks like on a microscope, okay? Everyone in this room. These are regenerative cells in the body. We all have them. They live on our tissue. They live in our organs. They live in our, they live in our teeth. Most people don't know this. You have MSCs in the teeth. You're going to start to see, and this is already starting to come out, that you can extract MSCs, these type of cells, out of, your, out of a tooth and begin to regrow teeth. Okay, that's what's, that's, what's, that's what's going to happen. So this is what it looks like. So this is the body of the cell. You have all these little pouches through here, and you have all these little legs. Well, there's a reason why they look like that, right? So what allows those cells to go to work in your own body is you have to have some type of trauma or injury or how the cells start to break down. All right, this is what activates those stem cells to go to work. So inflammation is the key. So if you have inflammation, it Act, activates those cells to go to work to help decrease the inflammation, repair, and regenerate tissue. So if we look over here, I'd also like, highly recommend to write this down. This name, that's another name here, is Dr. Arnold Kaplan, right here. Dr. Arnold Kaplan, he's the godfather of stem cells. So if you start doing some research with him, he's the one who coined the term mesenchymal stem cell or medicinal signaling cell. So he's got a tremendous amount of background and research, okay? So if you look here, these cells, those pouches and those legs, now when there's an injury to a joint, pick a joint, any joint, doesn't really matter, right? So if that, you've got that damage there, you've got loss of cartilage, you've got osteoarthritis, and you've got a tear of a, of a ligament or a tendon or a muscle or whatever it may be, those, those cells right here, the pouches and the legs are gonna go to the area and it's gonna start to attach to the damaged tissue. All those legs are gonna get in there and start attached to the tissue, right? And the pouches are gonna, all that, those things that we just looked at, all those, the pouches are gonna release. They're gonna release anti-inflammatory factors, cytokines, growth hormones, hyaluronic acid, collagen, all those things we were just talking about, right? So this happens every single day and every single year of your life. This is your innate intelligence of the body. It just does that, right? You don't have to tell your heart to beat. You don't have to tell your lungs to breathe. And these cells are medicinal cells, which have a, a signaling cell that go to the air to do what they're supposed to be doing, right? So if that's the case, and if you get older, why would you have any degeneration to begin with? If you already have these cells in your body, they're supposed to do the work, right? Why would you have degeneration? Why would you have things starting to break down? Why would you have osteoarthritis? Why would you have rheumatoid arthritis? Why would you have all these chronic inflammatory conditions if you already have these cells in the body? Well, we have to understand how this process works. And Time did an entire piece on this about the secret killer. And the secret killer, well, we have to understand, well, degeneration, what does that mean? How, do you, how does that even happen? Well, it is the deterioration and loss of the function of all the cells of a tissue or an organ or a muscle or any, or any uh, soft tissue. So inflammation, here comes that word again, inflammation is the reasons why. It is the primary reason of why your body breaks down. When it starts to break down and it can't, you can't keep, keep it up, right? It's just out of, uh, out of control, it becomes destructive. And when it becomes destructive, that's when you begin to lose the cartilage in your knees or loss of cartilage in your hip or you've got degenerative disc disease and bulging disc and um, all of those type of things, right? And shoulder problems and, well, that's because you have these cells, but you have too much inflammation and your body can't handle it, right? So then it can learn it, it can go into other types of issues. It can go into, look at these things. This is all driven 
through inflammation. So neurologic, pulmonary, cancer, cardiovascular, Alzheimer's, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, autoimmune diseases. The, every single one of these are a chronic inflammatory condition that leads to that, right? Uh, so what allows that to get out of control? What allows your body to get out of control of this inflammation, right? Could, is it one thing? Is it two things? Well, it could be multiple things. It could be, hey, we're in the, I call it the standard American diet, right? We're in America, right? So standard American diet, S-A-D, spell that out. Sad. sad, right? It's sad, right? So we, as in the United States, typically love the stuff that has sugar in it. All right, we eat cereals every, every day in the, mor in the morning. And we eat a, a big sub or pasta at lunchtime. And then we do the same thing at night. We have to have some bread, right? Right, day in and day out. What do you think happens when you eat like that for year after year after year? Right, so when all those we call simple carbohydrates turn into what? Sugar, Sugar which then turns into what? Inflammation, right? Day in and day out. That's just one little aspect of it, right? Could be your lifestyle, could be reduced sleep, could be having, I'm sure no one here has any stress, right? <laughs> Everyone's got stress. It could be physical stress, could be chemical stress, could be environmental stresses. Right? Uh, I see chronic patients. You know, my chronic patients are probably average is about 70 years old, right? And most people that come in to see me, they have chronic inflammatory problems. And most are taking some type of medication, typically 5, 10, 15. I've seen up to 25 medications a day, right? Could be that you've had an injury, could be you've been in a car accident, could be you've had a, you've had a fall, all right? Then you're not able to go and do the things that you would like to do. Um, you can't go walk, you can't go do this, can't go do that, and then it's just a bad cycle. All of this leads to all this inflammation that is out of control. So when that happens, and then you're left with a bad knee or a bad hip or a bad shoulder or a bad back, uh, we'll take, typically go to your doctor, right? Your primary doctor or your orthopedic doctor and do x-rays. So we can't look at every x-ray of every area, so, but just substitute whatever the problem may be for you. So this is what a normal knee joint looks like, okay? So this space right here is where the cartilage and the meniscus and all, you can't see it, but the space is nice and open, which means it's nice and healthy. There's no osteoarthritis in this joint at all. There's no bone spurs. It looks nice and healthy. Guess how many people come into my office that look like this? Zero. 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 This is what I see day in and day out. This particular person, this is their knee. Right, the space is open here, which means they have some cartilage left here. But if you look here, all the way across, it's really cloudy and it's really thin. This is degenerative cartilage damage right here. And this, if you look at this space, is osteoarthritis everywhere in this joint. There's a bone spur right here. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it right there. So this person's not in good shape. So they come in to see me to see, is there any way that I can get, because they're, they're, guess what? Their orthopedic doctor is telling them right then, right then and there. That's bone on bone. What are your options? That's one of them. So you go in to see the doctor and you say, well, let's try this before we talk about a replacement. Anybody done a cortisone shot? Yes. Lots of people have done cortisone shots. So what we have to understand is, okay, the doctor is trying to help you by giving you some relief, right? We wanna help decrease that inflammation with a steroid. Well, the problem is that's short term. So we have to understand, well, what's long term? Well, if you know what the cortisone actually does, because your doctor doesn't really sit down with you knee to knee and explains to you, they're just gonna jab a, jab a shot and right into your knee and then let it go and said, hey, come back in six months if, it's, you, know, if you need to. Cortisone shot, steroid, goes right into the joint. And how it helps is to, it will decrease inflammation, but we have to understand how. The how is very important, because the how is it's gonna slowly kill the blood supply to that joint. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, it's a big fancy word, it's called catabolic. It's catabolic to the tissue. It means it breaks the tissue down because that steroid gets right into that joint, and then you have little micro vessels in there that has oxygen and red blood cells, and that is what's needed for healing, and that is what cortisone does is it destroys it. Okay, so that is an option. How about anybody done the Synvix, the gel shots in the knees or the shoulder? Gel shots, all right. Yep, typically uh, 
Most people don't get a really good result. Yes, no, did it help? No. Did it help for, yes, a little bit, a little bit? No, not at all? All right, so most of the time, you may get three to six months and then you have to go back. Typically in some, it's like, it didn't help me at all. I did three shots of that and it didn't help, right? So now, maybe you've done physical therapy and maybe you're doing your anti-inflammatory um, medications, right? Okay, and none, if none of that's working, right, what are you left to? What are you left, right? So I'm here to tell you there are other options outside of going through those things, right? So we're gonna start off with Lottie Sachs here. She's 85 years old. She came in to see me and she's in great shape, 85 years old, except her right knee's in bad shape, okay? Bone on bone, came in with a cane, and uh, she said at 90, or excuse me, at 85 years old, I don't, I don't wanna have a complete replacement of my knee. I, every, everything is, is healthy except for my knee. So she came in and this is her five week follow-up. She did one injection in her right knee and this is her five week follow-up. My name is Lottie Sachs. I'm 85 years old and I've always had a lot of energy and uh, good, good physical being, but my knee started bothering, started bothering me and I came to Dr. Snyder for stem cell. I have been so pleased with the treatment. My energy has increased. Uh, my balance is better. I sleep better at night without the pain that I was having. And um, my life is just much fuller. I, I was having trouble uh, walking on the cobblestone driveway at our house. And now I maneuver without holding on to someone or using a cane. So. Dr. Schneider has helped me a lot. I was so apprehensive about having knee surgery that when I heard of stem cell here in Richmond, uh, I was very pleased to know that I, I was eligible to have that. So you'd recommend this to anybody else who had the same feelings that you were having prior? I would recommend this highly to anyone else that has had those feelings before stem cell. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is about a year ago, and she's doing really well still. So um, she's got a cool story. So she's not actually from Richmond. She's from California, but she was visiting her boyfriend who lives in Richmond. <laughs> right? So I was like, I mean, that's pretty cool. So she was, uh, yeah, she was visiting her boyfriend for six weeks. I normally do six-week follow-ups. We did a five-week follow-up for her because she was going on a cruise with her boyfriend on the six weeks. So, uh, so no, no longer cane. Um, so she's doing great. All right, so this is very similar. So when you watch that video with uh, Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson and Don here are very similar. So have really bad osteoarthritis, bone spurs, as well as torn labrums, could not bring their arms up. It's really bad range of motion. It couldn't bring the hands behind their back. Couldn't bring the arms up like this. So, um, so with Don, we did an injection uh, for his right shoulder, his left shoulder, and he also had a really bad neck. So he had, he had uh, osteoarthritis, bone spurs, osteonosis, uh, all those nasty things. So his options at the time were replacement for both shoulders, so bilateral shoulder replacement, and then a fusion for his neck. If you don't know what a fusion is in the spine, you take two rods, metal rods, and then screw them in into the, your cage, right? So this is his six week follow up after having an injection for each of those areas. Hi, my name is Don Susanbach. I live in Richmond, Virginia. I was diagnosed with arthritis in variable places in, up and down my spine, back, neck, shoulders years ago. And then in the last two or three years, I've developed bone spurs in those same areas. I came to Dr. Snyder to check out the stem cell uh, seminar that he held and really liked what he had to say and tried it. And now my left shoulder is 100% better my right shoulder that was giving me so much pain I couldn't even sleep at night, I would say it's 75% better. My right side of my neck is 100% better. The left side of my neck still gives me some pain, but uh, I'd say it's at least 50% better. So I'm very pleased with the success and uh, we're only six weeks into the process and it keeps regenerating from what I understand for a year. So I'm really looking forward to living a lot less pain-free life. Show us how those shoulders work. 
That's great. <laughs> so you would recommend this therapy to anybody who had the sim was in a similar situation as you before? Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Also, so he's got he can do all this range of motion. Uh, that was about a year ago, more than a year ago, uh, and he's still doing fantastic. All right. So. We can't always see inflammation warning signs. So I'm not gonna read this, but I want you to just scroll down. And if you have any of this going on in your body or multiple areas or multiple things in your body like this, then you have chronic inflammatory conditions. Chronic inflammatory systemic cellular inflammation, right? Anybody have any of this stuff? Show of hands, you don't have to tell me what it is, but most people have more than one of these things, a handful of these things, right? That means you are inflamed from the inside out, which is leading to all of these things. So here's where we're going to talk about the different various forms of stem cells out there, right? So this over here is autologous over here, and then over here is allogenic. So We'll talk about what autologous. Autologous means that you are getting stem cells from your own body. Okay, and there's a couple ways that you can do that. And they're both surgical procedures. So one surgical procedure is you actually get your own stem cells. What you have to do is bore a hole deep into your hip and extract your own stem cells from your bone marrow. Okay, sounds like fun, right? So um, that's one way. The other way is there's another surgery. But this one, you get it from your own adipose tissue, which is your fat tissue, okay? So that's two ways to get your own stem cells from your own body, right? Now, when we talk about allogenic, allogenic is actually coming from a donated tissue. I know you're thinking, how do you get a donated, how do you get donated tissue and how do you get stem cells from that, right? So briefly, I'm gonna go over, like a healthy mom has a healthy baby at the hospital. Right? And if she does not want to bank her own cord and her own placenta and amniotic fluid and all that, then she can be a candidate to, be, to donate that tissue to an FDA regulated cord bank. So healthy mom has a healthy baby in the hospital and the baby's healthy day, day zero, right? And she can donate it as long as she goes through the screening. So all infectious diseases have to be screened in order for her and the baby to be able to donate the tissue to an FDA regulated core bank. Um, so now within that, within that allergenic meaning donated tissue, you can get cells from the placenta, you can get cells from the amniotic fluid, and you can get cells from the human umbilical cord. Okay. Now within the human umbilical cord, you can get different cells, right? So it, that's why we have to talk about and educate about what we're doing here, right? So umbilical cord, you can get cells from human umbilical cord blood, and it's really not blood, but that's what they call it, which doesn't have any of the MSCs. This is very important. So if you're taking notes down, MSCs, they don't have, that particular product does not have MSCs. Now, there's human umbilical cord derived tissue that has the MSCs, and it's called Wharton's jelly. That's very important to understand. Wharton's jelly is the, the the jelly-like substance coming basically in the umbilical cord, there are little veins, and that's where you get them, that's where you get the Wharton's jelly from. So if you just start doing some research about Wharton's jelly, then you'll start seeing uh, a lot of the research, okay? So there's a lot going on with a lot of different products and a lot of things out there, and there's lots of people doing lots of different things, okay? So doing a recap, uh, autologous, getting it from your own fat or your own bone marrow from a surgical procedure, uh, it's gonna be cleaned and then it's gonna be administered through an injection wherever that injection needs to go. Uh, concerns, major surgery, pain, infection, contamination, unknown quantity and unknown potency. This is very important. Unknown quantity. You don't know how many cells you're gonna get, how many stem cells you're gonna get. Unknown potency. Well, it depends upon your age and it also depends upon what type of health that you're in. Okay, if you're not in good health, then most likely the potency of your stem cells are not going to be very good. This is very important in understanding this whole process. When you're a baby, you have 100% of the amount of MSCs left, 100%. That's why we choose to use human umbilical cord derived tissue, specifically Wharton's jelly, because it has the highest concentration and it has the most when you are a, 
yeah, a baby, day, what we call day zero. Now, as you age, 18 years old, you've already lost 60% of those MSCs and you're down to 40%. When you're 30, you're down to 75%. Loss of 75, you're down to 25%. And now, most of the people who come to see me are going to be 60 plus, 50, 60, 60 plus, you're dealing with 5%. Okay, so you've lost 95% of your own stem cells, right? So, as you age, that's also called aging, right? That's why if you look at a picture if you're 60, 50, or 60 years old, and you look at a picture when you're 20, do you look a little different? Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're slowly <laughs> losing all your stem cells, right, which causes you to age, right? So that's why regenerative medicine is also anti-aging. So, MSCs rapidly decline with age, resulting in longer repair and recovery times. So you're more prone to aging and disease as you age because of the loss of your own stem cells. It's very important to understand that. So this is the reasons why we use human umbilical cord derived tissue. So that's one reason. And these are a lot of other reasons. Coming from the umbilical cord, again, that's the Wharton's jelly right here. So you remember when I was talking about the umbilical cord that doesn't have the MSCs in it? That's more cord blood, right? That's where it's coming from, okay? It does have some other great factors in it, but it doesn't have the MSCs in it. Also, if you look over here, a warden's jelly, this is where the little veins are. That's where they're getting the, the, the jelly tissue that has the highest concentration of those MSCs. Now, also, there is no potential for allergic reaction. There's no blood typing. You don't, have to un, you don't have to know what your blood type is. There's no DNA or genetic transfer, okay? And there's not been one sense of rejection through this whole process, right? Youngest, most vital adult uh, tissue, adult stem cell tissue, right? It's very confusing, right? Because we're talking about a baby, but we're also talking about adult. So when the baby comes out and it's day zero, they're not even one day old yet, now they're considered adult stem cells. Okay, so again, where do we get them from? Healthy mom has a healthy baby. If she wants to donate it, or excuse me, if she wants to bank her own cord, she can. She goes through that process. Typically, it's a lump sum down to, from a payment standpoint, and then it's a monthly payment for year after year after year after year. Uh, and if she does want to donate it, she can donate it, okay? Um, and if she doesn't want to do either one of those, it's basically gonna go in the trash. So this is how the process works. So the umbilical cord is sent to an FDA regulated core bank. And that FDA regulated core bank is Predictive Biotech. This right here, Predictive Biotech. It's a publicly traded company. They've been around since 2005. And that's not just the type of stem cells that they do. They do a lot of incredible things. So I highly recommend to go to PredictiveBiotech.com so you can see them. So once they're at Predictive Biotech, that's where the tissue is going to be harvested. Through cl it's cleaned, cryo-stored, keeps th so these cells are going to be live cells, okay, they're cryo-stored, quarantined for three weeks, quarantine is to make sure there are no infectious diseases, okay, and then they go right back, uh, and then we are able to order them from Predictive Biotech, so just to make it simple, somebody comes in for a consultation, and they've got a bad knee, they want to move forward, they come in for a procedure day, and our nurse practitioner evaluates them, They've already been evaluated, everybody's on the same page, and we have, our, we have a cryo, uh, cryo tank that ha keep everything frozen. And then the patient comes in, right in front of them, we unthaw the patient's um, cells, and then they go right into an injection. It's a very small needle. It's, if you've already had a cortisone shot, it's nothing like a cortisone shot. It's a very small needle. It's like a pediatric needle to numb it down really, really well, and then an injection goes right in, and then you're done. 30 minutes or less, all right? Pretty simple. So this is Rodney, he came in to see me. Again, bone on bone, right knee. This is his six week follow up. Hello, my name is Rodney Allen. I'm here in Richmond, Virginia. I'm a patient of Dr. Snyder. Um, prior to me coming in to his office, I had no, I had extreme pain in my right knee. I could barely move, I could halfway walk. I could take one step and stop. I had no sense of balance, and I had um, I was I had tried um, I went to 
get the um, shots in the knee mm -hmm. and I was going to have a knee replacement, mm -hmm. but I figured I was too young. So I, I had to come in and try this. It does work. Within one week after having the stem cells put in, I can walk, I have a full gait, I have no pain. My pain level was a 10 before the um, procedure. Now I have no pain. Also, um, I have range of motion. It's wonderful to be able to get into the bathtub now. I haven't done that in two years. I can do that fully. Anyone, please give it a try. It is worth your investment. He's doing extremely well. So he's, he's a funny guy too. He's, you know, he's a fun guy to talk to. So in his consultation, like his knee has been like that for four years. When I talk about that, he, when he came in to see me, he could not bend his knee at all. Literally, he walked in like this. And I don't know how he did it because all he'd do is go to work on concrete and then come home. But he did that for two years straight. And he's like, oh my gosh, I, I gotta have something done. And he was already scheduled to do a complete knee replacement. So he was telling me all the things that he wanted to do when he got better. And one of that is uh, I wanted to get a sports car. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, okay, well, that's awesome. Well, we'll see if we can get you well enough to get, he goes, the reason why, because I haven't been living my life. I can't get down into a sports car. I can't even bend my knee at all. Uh, so anyway, about uh, three or four months ago, he came in for his follow-up and he's like, Dr. Schneider, the first thing he did, he said, check this out. I want to show you something. And he goes, okay, Rodney, what do you got? He goes, check this out. <laughs> That's what he did. I'm like, whoa. He goes, I told you if I was going to get better, uh, I, I was going to live my life. He goes, well, I, want you to, I want you to come outside. I've got to show you something real quick. I was like, I'm seeing patients, you know. And he goes, no, no, it's real quick, real quick. Come outside. So I went outside. He had gone out and bought a brand new Corvette. I said, Rodney, you went and bought a brand new Corvette? He goes, I told you I wanted a sports car. I thought that, okay, he goes, I'm living, I'm back to living, you changed my life. I was like, well, Rodney, thank you, but I didn't change your life. I just gave you the option to do stem cells and that did all the work. I didn't do all the work. Uh, so I thought that was a pretty cool story. All right, so who would benefit, all right? Anybody that has a chronic joint or a damaged soft tissue or any chronic inflammatory condition are those that are looking for a non-drug, non-surgical approach to improve the quality of their life. Those are the people that you really wanna consider doing something like this. So frequently asked questions, because there's always people that still think that, ah, this is investigational, there's no research, it's, you know, we're, we're still not, you know, this is so new. This is not new. You know, they've been doing this in Europe for 20 plus years. In Panama, Costa Rica, Mexico. Uh, we're now able to do this because the FDA has allowed us to be able to offer this, right? So if you like to do Lots of research here. Start writing notes down. Go to www.clinicaltrials.gov. www.clinicaltrials.gov. There's over 7,000 clinical trials going on as we speak worldwide. Go to pubmed.com. Pubmed, right up here, pubmed.com. You can go to pubmed.gov. Pubmed.gov. You can go to NIH, which is National Institute of Health, .gov, National Institute of Health, NIT, or NIH rather, NIH.gov. And these are all the different types of conditions that are, are, we're doing all these clinical trials to see how your body is responding to this. So pretty cool. And this is just a, a snapshot of some. How long is the procedure? For most, it's 30 minutes or less. 30 minutes or less. It's a really simple process, really simple. How many times will I need to get this done? Well, it really depends upon what your age is, how severe your conditions are. Um, and for, but for most, the general answer to that is typically just one time. Do, you, do I have people that wanna do this once a year because they already know the, what the, the, the benefit would be? Absolutely, yeah. You don't have to do too much, you can't do too much, you can't do you know, you can do too little. Depends on your condition, right? So that's where we have my, me, my medical doctor that oversees our nurse practitioner to come up there. Everybody understands what the, what the best re uh, recommendation that would be, okay? Um, so, all right, so Joni is our last uh, video testimonial. She came in to see me. She's a farmer. 
as well as uh, horses. So horses, gardens, all this stuff, right? She is not, was not able to do this. She had really bad wrists, meaning like cracking and popping and had hardly any strength. So she could not open bottles or jars. Uh, she, uh, at nighttime, her wrists would go numb completely and she was always freezing cold all the time. And uh, she had hardly any function in her wrists. So she did a one cc in each individual wrist this is her six, uh, six week follow up. Uh, and since then she's done her three month follow up and has even done, even gotten better results. But so the numbness is gone. Her hands are completely warm now. Uh, there's no clicking and grinding and popping. Uh, she can do, um, uh, she can, again, jars. She can open up jars and um, little, little tops. Uh, she's actually taking her uh, horse trailer and actually picking it up and putting it on the truck and she's gardening, she's doing all these things now. Hi, I'm Joni Pond from Ashland, Virginia. I attended one of Dr. Uh, Snyder's seminars to learn more about stem cell injections. Very interested in having them done in my wrists. I've had years of complications with my wrists, very, uh, very sore, I couldn't do the gardening that I love to do. They would crack, my hands would become very cold, numb when I'd sleep. Uh, very, very frustrating. I'm now here at my six weeks checkup after stem cell injections. I can open bottles. My hands are warm. Uh, this age spots on my skin have <laughs> lightened significantly. Um, I'm definitely able to uh, open bottles and do things that I haven't been able to do before. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so far you're, you're happy. Only been, it's only been six weeks. Yes. Okay, would you recommend for those that are dealing with arthritis and bad joints uh, and the wrists uh, to get uh, injections? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> I'm well, excited about uh, how it's going to continue to strengthen. Absolutely. Very good. All right, so what is the process in my office? I'm going to recommend to come to my office to do a consultation to determine if you're a candidate for what we're offering, right? So not everyone is a candidate. Not everyone uh, is a candidate. Now, I don't say that anybody comes into my office that I'm gonna that, that I'm gonna heal. Or uh, it's, it's not one of those things where you everyone do stem cells and everything is a it's not that's not the way it works. So we have to do a consultation to go over whatever your chronic health or regenerative condition may be. We do a full history. Uh, if we do need to do x-rays, I have digital x-rays in my office. It's really simple to do x-rays for, for me, and it's really simple and quick. And then I actually have, I go over the x-rays with you right, right then and there. All right? And if you have x-rays already, right, bring those in. The MRI, CAT scan, bring those things in, um, and I, I can go ahead and go over all that with you. I'll answer any question you have and then determine if you're a candidate. Um, and at that point, we'll determine what your recommendation is. So my staff goes over total with that, so we know exactly what your recommendation should be. Our nurse practitioner is Leanne Hill. Leanne Hill is extremely experienced in doing injections. So it's either going to be a joint injection or it's going to be an intramuscular injection. So it's going to go into a muscle, okay? So it's either going to be an intraarticular in a joint or into a muscle. All right. She's been in practice for more than uh, 19 years now. So what is the procedure? All right. So again, we've already done the consultation. We set up to do our, if somebody wants to go forward and, and do the injection. Uh, our nurse practitioner will do a brief exam and vitals and also go over the chief complaints, which I've already gone over with her. All right. So everybody's on the same page, making sure the therapy is performed and then you're done. You can, if you drive yourself to the appointment, you can drive yourself home. There's no waiting around. It's not a drug. It's not a surgery. Okay, it's just a simple injection. Okay, uh, so what we do is six week follow ups, three month, six month, and nine month follow ups, and observing how your body is responding. Okay, so this is my all star team Tiffany, who's actually in back, she's our office manager. This is Janine, she's my wife. She is co-owner with me. So we have our whole team and able to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm.